My name is Janet Warren. I am the Review and Adoption Coordinator in the Instructional Materials and Implementation Division. The purpose of this training is to show publishers how to use EMAT to submit post-contractual bids and how to update items. First, I will go over post-contractual item updates. The post-contractual item update link can be used to change the status of a program to not available. This status means that you cannot receive any new orders for these programs through EMAT. You must continue to honor previous purchases and provide all materials purchased for the length of time originally indicated on the bid. The status is used when the subscription length exceeds the number of years left in the contract. The post-contractual item update link can also be used to lower the price of a program or a component. You can use it to reduce the number of subscription years for a program or a component. And you can also use it to change the title of a program or a component from a specific number of years to the through school year format where you're using the last year of the contract. An example is changing the title from ABC Reading 8 Year Online to ABC Reading Online Access through School Year 2026-27. To get started, you will click the post contractual item update link on your EMAT start page. You will want to complete any item updates prior to submitting new post contractual bids. If applicable, you will select the publisher from the drop down menu and click OK. You will need to review the information at the top of the page in EMAT and click Next. On the next page, there will be additional instructions at the top of the page. Please review those carefully first. Then you will need to determine if the changes are needed when EMAT reopens for the next school year or immediately after approval. The checkbox automatically defaults to available when EMAT reopens for the next school year. So if the changes are needed immediately after approval, you will need to uncheck that box. To change an item status to not available, you will select Update item status to not available in the item action box. You will select the MLC using the magnifying glass. Then you will select the parent ISBN, which is the program ISBN, for the item you wish to change the status to not available. Next, you will use the magnifying glass to select the parent item ID. The title will populate based on the selections you've made. Some programs from Proclamation 2015 may have the same ISBN but different item IDs. Carefully check that you have selected the correct program to change the status. You will use the plus sign to add additional rows. You will need to save your work often. And you will select the certify box before submitting. You will use the item update option in the action item box to lower the price of a program or a component, to reduce the number of subscription years for a program or a component, or to change the title of a program or a component from a specific number of years to the through school year format. You will select the MLC using the magnifying glass. Then you will select the parent or program ISBN by clicking on the magnifying glass. Next, you will use the magnifying glass to select the parent item ID. If you need to make an update to a component, then you will select the component ISBN by clicking on the child ISBN magnifying glass. Otherwise, you will leave it blank. The rest of the information will populate based on the parent and or child ISBN and parent item ID you selected. Then you will make the appropriate updates to the price, the subscription years, or the title. You will use the plus sign to add additional rows. You will need to save your work often, and you will select the certify box before submitting. On the top of the item update page, there is a small print button in the top right-hand corner. You will use this to print the page. Now we will talk about post-contractual bidding in EMAT. 
The post-contractual bidding link can be used to create a new post-contractual bid, or it can be used to replace a previous bid to create a new bid. The previous program ISBN must have the status of not available. For example, if you had an eight-year bid and now would like to enter a seven-year bid, you would change the status of the eight-year bid to not available. Then you can pre-populate that eight-year bid information and update it to create your seven-year bid. First, you'll start by clicking the post-contractual bidding link from your EMAT start page. Then, if applicable, you will select the publisher from the drop-down menu and click OK. You will review the information at the top of the EMAT page and click Next to create your first post-contractual bid. When the page opens, please review the instructions at the top carefully before beginning your first post-contractual bid. Then you will need to determine if the changes are needed when EMAT reopens for the next school year or immediately after approval. The default box will be checked for available when EMAT reopens for the new school year. So if you need the changes immediately after approval, you will need to uncheck that box. The top section of the post-contractual bid will contain program information. You will begin by typing in the new program ISBN. Then you will fill in the rest of the information. You will use the drop-down menus when applicable. The subject area ID or description will populate based on the MLC you select. The multiple list codes or MLCs can be found on the TEA website by hovering over the Academics tab and clicking on Instructional Materials. Click the down arrow next to Adopted Materials at the bottom of the Instructional Materials webpage to view the MLC document link. The MLC document is updated yearly. The author field will only need to be entered at the program level for Proclamation 2015 subject areas. We will walk through each of the fields on the program section of the new post-contractual bid form. Each program must have a unique ISBN. You will enter the MLC. The subject area ID will populate based on the MLC selected. The TEKS percentage, you will enter the TEKS percentage determined during the state review panel meeting. It is important to remember that districts will see very little information when ordering. They will select an MLC and the program title. So each program title must be sufficiently descriptive. If the program type includes one or more digital components and includes the media format in the title, then you will want to use a format of product title and the number of years. For example, Texas English Grade 1 Digital Courseware, one year. If the program type includes one or more digital and non-consumable print components and does not include the media format in the title, then you will use the format product title and the number of years in format. For example, Texas English Grade 1 print with three-year digital. If the program type includes print consumables and one or more digital components, then the format should follow product title, number of years consumable, and number of years digital. For example, Texas English Grade 1 one-year consumable, three-year digital. And if the program type is a teacher system, then you will have the format of the program title and the number of students served. For example, Texas English Grade 1 class set, 30 students. If your program will allow price updates to existing ISBNs, you should use the through school year format in your titles to avoid creating post-contractual bids yearly. You will only enter the author at the program level for programs from Proclamation 2015. For all other proclamation years, you will enter the author at the component level. For the class type, you will select student if the district can order any quantity of student materials. At least one component listed must be a student component. If a teacher edition is included, 
a student to teacher ratio is required. You will select teacher if all components are intended for the teacher. Select teacher system if the program includes a class set of student and teacher materials and should be ordered by the number of teachers rather than students. You will enter the copyright year and you will enter the edition. For the program price, you will enter the per student or per teacher price that a district will pay if it orders the entire program. The number of print pages for students field will be used to indicate the total page count for all print student components and any pages in the teacher components that are intended for the student and not included in the student components. If no print components are included, then you will leave this blank. The digital subscriptions, you will select yes if the program contains any online or electronic components that will be available for a specific number of years. You will select no if the program does not contain any online or electronic components. And then you will indicate the number of years the digital subscription will be available at the program price indicated on the bid. This information should also be clearly indicated in the title of your program. In the media format field, you will select the most appropriate option from the drop down menu. Online materials require access to the internet, but electronic materials do not. If your program is mostly print with either online or electronic components, you should select print with online. If your program is mostly online, you should select online with print. The ratio field, you will indicate the number of student materials that must be purchased at the program price in order to receive the teacher materials listed in the bid. This field is only required when the class type is student. The system requirements is where you will list specific requirements needed to access any online or electronic components for the program. If the program is print only, this field may be left blank. And then the description field you will use to provide relevant information regarding your program, including the quantity of each component that will be sent with each order. You will use the add button in the component section to add additional components. Now we will walk through each of the component fields. Each component title must be sufficiently descriptive. You will need to include the number of print consumable or digital subscription years in the component title. And if possible, use this through school year format. In the author field, you will enter the name of the authors of the component. Each component ISBN must be unique. One component can be entered in multiple bids. But with Proclamation 2015, you may have the same ISBN at the program and the component level. This is not permitted beginning with Proclamation 2017. In the media format, you will select the most appropriate option from the drop-down menu. In the print consumable field, you will indicate whether or not the component is a print consumable. Then you will enter the copyright year. In the item type, you will indicate the intended audience for the component, either student or teacher. In the number of print consumable years field, you will indicate the number of years the consumable will be available at the component price. This information should also be clearly indicated in the title of your program. In the quantity field, you will indicate the number of copies of the component that will be included in the program for the price listed. The quantity should be at least one. In the price field, you will enter the component price when purchased separately. You will select the specific format for the product type. And then you will indicate whether the component was used to demonstrate TEKS coverage during the state review panel meetings using the TEKS bearing component field. For the digital subscription, select yes if the component contains any online or electronic components that will be available for a specific number of years. Select no if the component does not contain any online or electronic programs. The number of digital subscription years, you will indicate the number of years the electronic components will be available. 
This information should also be clearly indicated in the title of your program. You will list any specific requirements needed to access any online or electronic components in the system requirements field. If the program is print only, this field may be left blank. And then in the description field, you will use this field to provide any relevant information regarding the component that you wish to communicate to districts. You will type in the ISBN of the new component into the component ISBN field. You may use the magnifying glass to select an existing component ISBN. You will use the arrow at the bottom of the component section to view and add subcomponents. You will want to save your work often and check the certify box before submitting. If a field turns red when you save or submit, enter the missing information. If the red field is not editable, go back to the post-contractual bid list and select the bid again to make the changes. You will use the print button to review the bid information in the PDF format. Now we will go over replacing a bid. Remember, to replace a previous bid with a new bid, the previous bid must first be changed to the status of not available on the post-contractual item update page. You will click Replace Item, and then in the ISBN Being Replaced field, you will use the magnifying glass to select the previous ISBN. The previous information will pre-populate. The text fields will be grayed out, so you will need to type the new ISBN into the ISBN field, then tab to the next field, and the grayed out fields will open for changes. You will make the appropriate updates to the program section, changing the price, the number of subscription years, the title, and any other changes that are needed. To replace a component, you will click Replace Item in the Component section, then click Add. In the New Component field, type in the new ISBN or use the magnifying glass to select an existing component. If you're changing an existing component from a num one specific number of years to a fewer years, then remember to use a new ISBN. If your component already has through school year in the title, then you can go to the post-contractual item update link to update the price or the number of subscription years for that existing component. If you use the magnifying glass to select a existing component ISBN, then the previous bid information will pre-populate. The text field will be grayed out. You type in the new ISBN in the ISBN field and tab to the next field, the grayed out fields will open for changes. You will make appropriate changes to the component section. You will use the delete button to remove any components from the bid that are not needed. You will want to save your work often and check the certify box before submitting. Use the print button to review the bid information in a PDF format. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this training. If you have questions or need further assistance with post-contractual bidding in EMAT, please contact the Instructional Materials and Implementation Division by submitting an Instructional Materials Help Desk request. Thank you.